are. So one second. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. I would say very young. Very young? Yeah, I would think. <coughs> if we get to that. Hopefully she's coming. Oh, there she is. All right. Yeah, we, no, right there. We spread out a little bit. I see that we have a quorum. I have a motion to open the meeting. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor, sign aye. 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 Uh, at this time, I ask everyone to please uh, stand with me uh, for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the March 18th, 2020 Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. Uh, at this time, I request that everyone please turn off or mute all uh, cell phones and other electronic devices. Uh, applications for conditional use permit requests and rezoning requests will be heard during tonight's meeting, and the commission will vote on these applications and make a recommendation to the county council. The applications will then be scheduled to be introduced before the county council at the Monday April 13th, 2020 County Council meeting. Public comment for conditional use permit requests will be taken during tonight's meeting and at the council meeting on Monday, April 13th, 2020. Public comment on conditional use permit applications uh, will not be taken at any meeting of the County Council held thereafter. The following documents are introduced as a matter of record for this evening's public hearing and regular meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission. Unified Development Ordinance, Ordinance of St. Charles County, including zoning maps, the year 2030 Master Plan for St. Charles County, which includes the year 2030 Future Land Use Plan map. Uh, before we get into our agenda this evening, I would like to welcome uh, two new members, Ms. Tracy Bamer, who's representing District 1, and Mr. Terry uh, Hollander, who is a member of the St. Charles County uh, Council. So welcome, Commissioner. Thank you. Um, a little roadmap as to how the meeting works. Uh, I will read the uh, application into the record. Um, we will then ask staff for their report. Uh, we may have questions for staff at that time. Then we'll ask the applicant to come forward, uh, make their presentation as to their application. Um, the uh, commissioners may at that time, ask questions of the applicant and or the staff. Uh, then we will open up uh, the hearing to the public. Anyone wishing to speak regarding the application can come forward to, to speak. If you are going to speak, uh, Sheila, where's our little cards? And they're up on the podium. I, I don't know they're over there. I can see them. Uh, there's a little white card. We ask you to fill that out. Uh, so that we get your name and address uh, correct uh, in our records. Also, when you come forward to speak, uh, since this is a recorded hearing, um, I will have to swear you in. Uh, so that's uh, And then once the public hearing is closed, um, we will call the applicant back. 
uh, to address any concerns that uh, arose out of the public hearing. Um, and then at that point in time, uh, the commission will consider the application and we will uh, take a vote. Uh, that's sort of the, that's the procedure that is, is followed. Okay, the first item on our agenda this evening is a conditional use request. The location is uh, uh, 215 Joseph Phil Road, application number CUP 20-01. Uh, property owner applicant is Birdie Incorporated. Property zoning is uh, one L1 Light Industrial District. Conditional use request is outdoor storage of boats, recreational vehicles, and construction equipment. Uh, the 2030 master plan recommends industrial uses. The par parcel size is 23.44 acres. The location is on the west side of Josephville Road, approximately 1,000 feet south of Mexico Road, adjacent to General Motors in the city of Wentzville. This is located in Council District 1. Staff. If the uh, laptop images can be shown on the screen, that would be great. Thank you. All right, um, again, this is a conditional use permit. It's not a rezoning request, but it's a request uh, to allow outdoor storage of boats, recreational vehicles, and construction equipment. Property is already zoned industrial. As you can see from this location map, it's basically across from the GM plant. It uh, extends between Josephville Road and <coughs> Highway A. And this um, area is already zoned industrial in the unincorporated county. You'll see the parcels zoning here. The green represents agricultural zoning and the uh, gray represents industrial zoning. And so uh, un under the I-1 light industrial district, one of the potential uses, conditional uses is, is um, outdoor storage of boats, recreational vehicles, and construction equipment. <coughs> A um, concept plan has been submitted Hopefully this is working. Yeah. Concept plan has been submitted, which you have before you here. That dark gray in the middle is an outdoor storage area uh, where um, boats, recreational vehicles, construction equipment will be stored. Up front on Josephville Road are two uh, vacant, what they're calling pad sites in here for some sort of future uh, development, say offices, for instance. If that would ever be the case, um, by the way, I think that would trigger the need for utilities and from the city of Wentzville and probably the need for annexation. But at this point, uh, their, their plan does not entail uh, necessity of utilities. And so for that reason, it appears it can be done out in the unincorporated county. <clears throat> Drainage would be towards the back. There's a um, utility transmission line that cuts the property diagonally towards the back. And so the, the access again would be from Josephville Road. The Josephville Road frontage, uh, they're showing a uh, <coughs> landscape buffer to help um, screen the view from Josephville Road of that outdoor storage area. So as always, your conditional use permit criteria, I'll just briefly give you an overview Will the conditional use be detrimental to or endanger public health, safety, or general welfare? Will the conditional use be injure, excuse me, will the conditional use injure the use and enjoyment of other property in the immediate vicinity for the purposes already permitted or to the aesthetic and or scenic values of the vicinity? Will the conditional use substantially diminish and impair property values within the neighborhood? Will it impede normal and orderly development and improvement of surrounding property. Those are the standards that uh, are provided by ordinance. The recommendation of the Planning Zoning um, Division is that the Planning Zoning Commission recommend approval of the conditional use request as complying with the, the criteria that I just cited um, and recommends, if you sh should so choose, that you recommend approval with certain conditions uh, we have draft conditions, drafted conditions for you that are in this, this memo, in the memo that's uh, part of your packet. Any questions for staff? 
the, the letter from Wentzville, mm -hmm. how does that impact this, develop, this uh, conditional use? They, um, one of the things they asked for was that the site be paved rather right. than um, gravel. gravel. What I, um, one of the things I look for is, is it really an urban or suburban setting when people request gravel? And if it, there's not a lot of homes around it, I'll often uh, allow gravel surfaces or crushed stone if they make part of the site plan, how they would treat the gravel if it becomes a problem. Like if, if we get complaints about dust in the site plan, we'd like them to add a note saying that we'll, uh, we'll apply calcium chloride or magnesium chloride or soybean oil or whatever they, that might be used to control dust. But that's one of the options that we have in our site plan ordinances in terms of surfaces. And you do that after the approval of this then? Okay. Yeah, we do. Thank you. Uh, Robert, the, uh, the buffer to Josephville Road, would that will, we don't need to set that out in the conditions since it will, will that be covered in the site plan? It would be covered in the site plan and there's also specific provisions for uh, front yard landscape buffering in our ordinance. It's required by ordinance. And they're, they're showing it here to show you how it relates to the overall site. Okay. Any other questions for staff? Seeing none, we'll have to ask the applicant to come forward. Do Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that you'll tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings under the pains and penalties of perjury? Yes, sir. I will. Please state your name and address for the record. Steve Lane. Address is 114 Stone Ridge Meadows, O'Fallon, Missouri, 63366. Okay. Go ahead, Steve. Um, just like this gentleman explained, uh, it's an outdoor storage facility for um, boat and RV storage, mainly uh, travel trailers is what we're really seeking to have our, our clientele. Don't really want to hold a whole lot of boats. Um, I am in the construction business, so the intent was to relocate my office in this location. That's one of the future pads. Um, that's uh, probably a five-year plan, but this was to get it up and running and get some in income coming through. There is about 123 uh, parking stalls. To, apply, to basically fit in this space. We do have all the proper storm water quality um, identified for the back rear of the property to uh, account for all the runoff. Um, we did intend on having a gravel surface, so um, that's really about it. He's covered pretty much everything else. So. Will, will this be an open or a gated facility? Gated, uh, completely fenced uh, around the all entire property. So. I believe we're showing six foot high chain link fence. Okay. Questions for the applicant? Have you, uh, do you run any of these types of facilities anywhere else? I'm not, no. Okay. Any other questions? If not, thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, we will now open the public hearing for <coughs> CUP 20-01. Is there anyone here wishing to speak regarding this uh, application? <coughs> evening, Arch. Good evening. How are you? You solemnly swear or affirm that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings from the pains and penalties of perjury? Yes, I do. Please state Thank your you. name and address for the record. Thank you very much, members of the commission. My name is Arnie C. A.C. Dinoff, County Public Advocate and Citizen. Uh, mailing address is P.O. Box 1535 in O'Fallon. Um, we've had a lot of uh, storage facilities throughout the county. It really affects the property values and the quality of life of our county. As we all know, subdivisions in certain municipalities do not offer you to park boats, trailers, or other type vehicles uh, over a Type 3 uh, in your driveway. So some of these are of necessity. Some people in the county do it right. Some people are first class. Follow the rules and regulations and the codified code, uh, and especially our building codes. Some do not. Uh, in this case, uh, I don't know this owner. He doesn't have a track record as some of the other applicants before you who have several boat and storage facilities uh, throughout the county. Uh, I'd like to add the following conditions uh, that no unlicensed or derelict vehicles be allowed on the property, that, uh, and that's defined by the Missouri Department of Revenue state statute. 
um, it needs to be operable to be operated on a roadway. That no broken down non-operable vehicles be stored at this facility. That there be no damaged or crashed vehicles more than 45 days to allow the uh, owner or the person storing the vehicle there to meet with the insurance adjuster to come to some type of solution. Uh, that no storage of parts be allowed on this property. Uh, that no barrels be allowed on this property. That a type three berm as what was uh, required in some of the other um, uh, storage facilities that both the County Council and the Planning and Zoning Commission requested. I think that type three barrier really works where you have a row of pine trees on the side of the applicant and then you have a berm and then you have vegetation and landscaping and then another row of uh, pine trees or spruce trees. Um, the city of Winsville had sent a letter which was uh, addressed by Mr. Myers uh, about the um, um, paved surface. I think because it's adjoining a uh, municipality that it's very imperative that the uplook and the property values of the Winsville area be upheld. <coughs> this is not a rural setting, this is a urban setting and a metropolitan setting. Uh, and finally, I would ask that you put a condition that a site-proof fence be uh, put throughout the fe uh, fence so that uh, the storage of these vehicles can't be seen from the public roadway. Uh, and that ends my presentation. I'll answer any questions if I can. Any questions for Mr. Dennell? Seeing none, thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak regarding uh, application CUP 20-01? Seeing no one, we will close the public hearing and bring this uh, application back to the commission. Anyone have any additional questions for the applicant? Any discussion, comments, questions of staff? Seeing none, Chair will entertain a motion to approve CUP 20-01 as presented by st uh, staff with the uh, included uh, conditions. Motion. Mr. Hollander makes the motion. Second. Mr. Fromm makes the second. Ms. Sally, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Mr. Fromm? Yes. Uh, Mr. Hollander? Yes. Uh, Ms. Bamer? Yes. And I vote yes. Motion passes. Sorry, did you say the ladies right here? Uh, just give it to the ladies over there. Next item on the agenda is uh, a conditional use request, uh, 1125 Dietrich Road, uh, application number CUP 20-02. Uh, property owner is Edward and Tammy Berrio. I got that right. Applicant is Valley Farms, LLC. Property zoning is uh, A slash FF, agricultural district with floodway fringe overlay district. Conditional use re uh, request is a request to amend CUP 17-06 to expand the hours of operation allowed and the maximum number of guests allowed. The 2030 master plan recommends low density residential uses, one to four dwellings per acre. The parcel size is 20.67 acres. Uh, the location is on the west side of Dietrich Road, approximately 600 feet north of Wild Horse Drive. Uh, this is located in Council District 1. Staff. If you uh, served on the Planning and Zoning Commission in 2017, remember, you may remember this application as maybe the first, uh, what I would call a wedding venue, this rural residential wedding venue that we reviewed mm -hmm. after the ordinance change. And <coughs> what's located here now is certainly uh, a rural destination, I would call it. And some people call it a pumpkin patch, but it's really an agriculturally themed destination for families. But in addition to that, uh, in 2017, the applicants uh, applied for and received a conditional use permit to hold weddings and other events, uh, weddings and wedding receptions on the property in an uh, existing agricultural building. And so since 2017, they have been, um, they have been, um, um, conducting that use on the property. And now they're returning with a request to amend two of the conditions, number two and number six of this, of this ordinance, ordinance number 17-070. Uh, 
the first condition that they request to amend has to do with what um, the months and the times that uh, the use can be held, weddings and wedding receptions, for instance. And um, originally, the, uh, those months were set uh, because working collaboratively, collaboratively with the applicant, they were looking at doing that number of events per year. And there was concern about neighbors about, well, how's this gonna work with the number of events per year? One way to limit the events, number of events per year was to say it can only be held on these days of the week and these months of the year. So by, by default, you, you're, you have a maximum number of events you can do. So again, they're requesting to, um, to no longer have restrictions on the number of, of months, but they're still looking, seeking to have it on uh, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, those, those events. Additionally, they're looking at to bump up the time uh, an hour, essentially, and the specifics are in your memo. The second um, condition they're looking to amend is the um, restriction of no more than 200 guests allowed, and they're requesting that it be amended to 250 instead of 200. And one of the reasons given in our previous discussions was that, well, if they have a wedding, a lot of wedding parties will average around 200. That's pretty typical, I think. Well, what if you're planning for 200, but you have 212? Is that gonna be in violation of this ordinance? Uh, so <coughs> they're, they're like some wiggle room, according to them, in terms of the number of, of people. The site is about uh, 20 acres, and it's in the far northwestern um, portion of the county. And as was stated before, it's zoned agricultural. The green represents agricultural zoning. Uh, those dash lines represent floodplains. So most of this property is in uh, the, the floodplain. So what you have in your packet, the specific wording of the requested revisions. And you also have uh, three letters of support and uh, several communications from Daniel Pressman and Kathleen Walsh in opposition. I would say one of the things that staff researched was whether or not we'd received um, complaints about the operation. What's nice about uh, reviewing amended conditions, there's a track record for it, so you can find out how well it works. We have not, I, what I should say is Community Development Department has not received any complaints since uh, the approval in 2017 for noise or um, other reported violations. Now having said that, noise violations would be followed up by the, um, the county police rather than community development department necessarily. But I did wanna let you know that we hadn't received um, complaints to our department. County staff is recommending um, that the Planning and Zoning Commission recommend approval of amending uh, these two conditions as requested by the applicant. Any questions of staff? I just had two questions. Mm -hmm. In the paperwork that was submitted um, by, apologies, <coughs> uh, Daniel Pressman and Kathleen Walsh, what was the case net piece, what, what was that referring to in regard to this? I, didn't I was catch a little anything confused by that. Yeah, I didn't catch anything in the letter or communication about CaseNet. Uh, what I remember from the letter had to do with um, noise, and uh, they want to ensure that the, um, that the use of the property stays within the noise limits. So I think they're essentially monitoring what's going on there. So they're always interested in what's, what's going on there. But I, I didn't notice anything about the case now. Well, it was a, f a slide that they presented with some videos and some other things. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, it was a slide in there that had case net and guilty, and it didn't really give any information about what that was. So I wasn't really sure if that was a complaint that they were found guilty of or what that was regarding. And the other thing yeah. was um, they, they're saying that there are other parties and things going on there besides wedding receptions. Mm -hmm. So if, if it's just wedding receptions that they can have there, or can they have any event? They can have other events. Yeah, for instance, if someone wanted to have a, a um, 
holiday event or um, reunion, something like that, those mm -hmm. are allowed as well. Okay. Yeah, the original so, CUP included other events. Oh, okay. All right. I wasn't on the commission at that time. <laughs> okay. Very good. Thank you. Sure. Do all of those events have to comply with the same months, times, everything else, or is it only weddings? Well, it it's separates out, in condition number two, it separates out weddings and other events in terms of what time they shall end. The very last sentence says, any other events will end okay. no later than 10 p.m. on week, in, weekends and 9 p.m. on weekdays. Do so they the, want to change that as well? They are requesting. Yes. Let me make sure I get this right. The, the wording be that that entire number two be stricken and replaced with the wording, wedding receptions will be offered on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Receptions will end no later than 12 a.m., except that music at such wedding receptions will end no later than 11 p.m. All other events will end at 11 p.m. on weekends and 10 p.m. on weekdays. And they can, they can explain, explain what they're thinking in terms of why certain times, why those would or would not work for them. Okay. Any other questions of staff? When they were approved in 2017, was, was 200 the maximum they could get at that time in terms of getting number of guests, or could they have gone higher then? Well, uh, I've, I've looked into that, and <clears throat> at the time, I think uh, there was a, uh, a limitation for a couple of reasons, but th some things have changed. And one of them was that they now have a bathroom, um, that handicapped accessible bathroom, mm -hmm. that, which they didn't have at the time. When they first started, they were to use uh, porta potties, for oh. instance. Uh, but now that the, the, the events are more, um, anyway, they're, they've invested in the, the property, and so they've added a bathroom, for instance. Um, also, it depends if you, buildings don't have to be sprinklered if there's certain factors involved, like if there's no kitchen facilities, there's no <coughs> bar, if you just cater all the food in, and there's certain size limitations, then it doesn't have to be sprinklered. So I think that they can go up to, my research indicates they could go more than 200 okay. within the facility, that barn. Any other questions? Hearing none, we'll ask the applicant to come forward. Hello. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings under the pains and penalties of perjury? Yes, I do. Please state your name and address for the record. Edward Barrio, 149 Sumac Ridge Drive, Forestell, Missouri. Go ahead, Edward. Um, well, um, I think, you know, Robert covered most of it. We, we've been operating for three years with um, no complaints. Uh, I assure you there's been no violations whatsoever. Um, and we have never had the police visit us for loud music or any other problem. Um, so um, just, uh, Robert was right. The, one of the main reasons we were restricted at the beginning, uh, especially uh, according to Jared, you can't have a full-time business without full-time restrooms. So it had to be considered a seasonal business because we didn't have the full, now we have commercial permitted uh, year-round heated and air-conditioned restrooms. So, um, you know, we wanted to expand that to a year-round. Uh, we still don't plan on doing weddings in, you know, uh, December and January and February. We can't heat the building. Um, but we do really want, we're really counting on the summertime expansion, mainly because of this virus, I am going to have to actually uh, reschedule. Uh, probably it's going to end up, you know, as much as I probably more than I do. I'm going to have to schedule all my April, re reschedule all my April, and probably most of my May, if not all my May. I'm really counting on uh, July and August of this year to potentially do so. Any other questions? I'll be happy to address any questions you have <laughs> about anything that's been sent to you. Did you um, lose some business because you couldn't do 250 or? No, did... what that's all about, I mean, I built the facility for about a 200 person wedding. Right. Um, I, I really can't go much more than 200. But as you can tell, um, I'm, I'm watched very closely all the time. So what I'm, my fear is 
just like you said. Some people say, some of the brides say, oh, I'm gonna invite 210. And I'm like, 200 your max. Oh, well, 10 people won't show up. You know, I'm not gonna not take that wedding, and, but I keep telling them. So if I am, is potentially somebody outside my gate with a counter, and if he counts 201, I don't wanna be held for a violation. I do not plan on doing any bigger weddings at all. They won't fit. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I, I have, uh, you know, I have no problem with the, you know, 200 to 250, that's, that's understandable. I do have questions about the increase in the, uh, the times though, what, what, is, what yes. is the need for that? Same thing, I wish I actually brought what I call my sample agenda um, that I give to all my brides and it actually ends the music at 10. But then I say, you know, we're a little flexible. My policies right now, it's in my rules and regulations, it's online, you can go check it out. Um, it says music can not go past 10.30, okay? A couple of weddings, I've done almost over 60 weddings already. There was one or two nights, you know, they usually cut it off at 10, some choose to do 10.30. And I'm literally sitting there with my watch, you know, because people are listening and bad people are listening. And I don't want to be at 10.01 and his with his atomic clock and the nine and the one already pressed. I just need a little bit of cushion so I don't have to cut off the last song. I still intend, make no, have no intentions to change my policy of 10.30. I just, I need, need a little cushion. Who's watching you? <laughs> uh, I mean, it should be obvious in the packet that you it's, got. Okay. Uh, we've, I, had, we've had major problems with him. All right. And, yeah. I, and I did look at his website, and that is his policy, the 1030 on the music. And when they're playing the last song, I can't run up while the bride stands and say, cut this song off right now because it's 10, 29, and 59 seconds. Yeah, that, that explains the, the music part. What about the additional hours for the events? Uh, you mean after the music turns off? Yes. Yes, so even in my old permit, I had one extra hour after the music turns off because, again, that gives all of the vendors and everybody to clean up all their stuff and get out, meaning I'm, I'm, I'm wanting that place empty at midnight. Music's over the rest of the next hour, and again, it says on my webpage and my rules and regulations that the last hour is used for cleanup only. With some hefty fines if they don't get it cleaned up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if they make me clean it up, there is an extra charge. <laughs> that hasn't happened yet. Well, we haven't charged for it yet, I guess. I, I do have a question looking at the material that uh, Mr. Pressman sent. Um, it had on July 21st, you had a craft beer and barbecue event. Um, I mean, you probably know the date better than I would right now, yeah. And, and, and I don't know where, this, where the information came from, but it showed 2,858 guests. Oh, wow. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's incredible because um, I think I had almost 200. I don't, did he put that number in some I, of his? I don't know. I mean, I was just reviewing it, and it stuck out because all the other numbers were 75 to, you know. Yeah, I don't know where that number came from. That's, I think that's physically impossible for that to happen. I don't have the parking, and you can't park on Dietrich Road. Yeah. Yeah. But I'd love to have an event that big somewhere else. So, yeah. yeah. Any no, other? no, you wouldn't. No. <laughs> yeah, right. Not right now, are we? No. Any uh, other questions for the applicant? Hearing none, thank you, sir. Thank you. We will now open the public hearing for uh, application number CUP 20-02. Anyone wishing to speak regarding this application? Thank you. You solemnly swear or affirm that you'll tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings under the pains and penalties of perjury. I do. Please state your name and address for the record. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Arnie C. A.C. Dinoff, uh, County Public Advocate and Resident. Mailing address is P.O. Box 1535, O'Fallon. Um, first of all, I missed my space here. Let's see here. Hold on one second. Um, I'd like to say that I'm not in opposition to the amount of gas. I think that falls in compliance with the other wedding venues and the other uh, venues that have been approved uh, for use of barns throughout the county. Um, it's been around 200 to 250 people. 
I, however, have an issue with the time frame. Um, I want to make sure that this commission and that the county council treats all of our citizens and all the applicants fairly on an even keel basis. If you all recall in the last year and past years, uh, Billy Bush uh, facility uh, comes to mind in Wentzville where you limited the audible noise to uh, a time limit and also uh, a time limit of the um, uh, parties to cease operations. A uh, highway end, the pumpkin patch, you limited uh, time frames there. Uh, and that just was passed, I believe, in the fall of this year. Highway F, Mr. Brinkman, who serves on the Missouri Transportation Commission, was uh, severely limited to, I believe, a 10 p.m. Uh, time frame that the weddings must be uh, done and over with and that the doors be shut and there be no amplified music. I believe it was over 9.30 or 10 o'clock. I haven't had time to research it through the uh, meeting minutes and speak to the director of planning, but uh, that's my recollection. Um, there's many farm and wedding venues that have been given restrictions, and I don't recall many that were given even uh, at 11 o'clock. I think most of them were at the 10 o'clock period. Most of them were no amplified uh, music allowed and that the doors had to be shut. Um, and we need to look at the right of the neighbors. Uh, I was trying to find this letter uh, there's some concern here. I haven't had a t uh, chance to research the court case that uh, the neighbors are alleging, but it said that there were threats and that there was, uh, and these are allegations, I, I wanna make it clear for the record, but they stated that it was a three-year case that took three years to adjudicate and that the applicants were found guilty by, I'm not sure if it was the county municipal court or the circuit court, but uh, that's definitely in the letter. Um, I would ask that you ask staff to do their due diligence and do their research to find out exactly what that case is involving, if it's involving alcoholic beverages or a noise violation or some type of threats. I think that that's very pertinent to you having and knowing that information before passing on a recommendation. But the bottom line is, is that you have to treat the applicants fairly. And if you look at the number of applicants that have come to you just in this year alone, uh, I'm sorry, in 2019 alone, uh, the Highway F wedding venue, the Brinkman property farm uh, and wedding venue, you limited that time restraint uh, to audible music. And Mr. Hollander could probably, if it's his recollection brings it up, he could probably come up with those times. But you limited it to him on those times and when the time of the wedding could go. And I think there was even a further restriction on Sundays. So this is Friday, Saturday, and Sunday that they're requesting. Um, I would ask that this uh, commission take notice of your past applications and that we treat each applicant not playing favoritism or not putting somebody in an even keel playing field. And let's keep these venues to a 10 o'clock cutoff time for the weddings and a 9.30, 9.45 cutoff time for any amplified or audible music with the doors of the barn closed or the wedding facility. Uh, I'm gonna do the research between now and the county council and come up with my figures for definite facts. Uh, staff can probably tell you those facts and Mr. Hollander could tell you those facts, but uh, I wanna make sure that you treat all of our applicants on an even keel playing field. Thank you very much. Any questions for Mr. Dinoff? I would say, Mr. Dinoff, uh, some of the various in times were at the request of the applicants. Some were added by the commission also. Mm -hmm. That's true. Some were at the so, request of applicants, so thank you. Great, thank you. Anyone else wish to speak uh, regarding CUP 20-02? Uh, Seeing no one, we will close the public hearing. Um, ask the applicant to come back. So, Edward. Any questions for the applicant? I guess I have one question. Uh, were you involved in a lawsuit that is related to the operation of this venue? No. Okay. Any other questions for the applicant? Okay, thanks, sir. We will now bring this back to uh, the commission for discussion. Any questions, comments? 
Yeah, my, my, my comments are, are fairly simple. I, I can understand the um, additional months, um, especially under the conditions now. I can understand the additional guests. That's, you know, that's a little bit. I, I don't understand uh, the times. I think the times are, were set uh, and uh, they seem to have worked. <clears throat> Um, increasing those, um, and again, not calling on any individual case, but there's been quite a few of them in the last uh, two years where the uh, the amount of time was was lower than this actually. So I, I, I'm somewhat opposed to the increase of time, but not not the months or the or the number of guests. Shouldn't he come back up and let him? And actually, we would be fine with that. We don't ch plan on changing our policies. May I request a five-minute cushion on that so I don't have to stop? It's really hard for me to control the DJ when he starts a song and when he stops a song. And they all, every bride in the world wants her final song. And I would be, I got two choices if it runs over by even just a couple seconds. I either, sh I either sh hit the circuit breaker on the DJ and get shot by the uh, bride or I have potential issues with uh, a particular person. So I would be happy with just a five minute cushion on that. I, I think there's always gonna be a problem no matter what time it is, so. Even though you have a policy on your website that says it shuts off at that time. Right. You're gonna want one more song. I mean, it's like I said, the song, I, I, I don't know if it's ever gone over, but that's just always my biggest fear is it's gonna go over by just the tiniest bit. And now he technically has a violation. Mm -hmm. If you have any other ideas, I mean, I'm certainly open to. And right now we're making you turn the music off at what time? 10.30? 10.30. And we're pushing it to 11. Is that correct? That's right. the proposal. And I've actually looked around at some of the, some of the names sounded familiar. I know there's a couple of 11 o'clocks in there in some of these uh, St. Charles County. I, I thought there was. And I was basing it kind of on that. Again, if, I mean, that's all I had to say. Uh, sit down. Thank okay, you. thank you. Yeah, there. Can we split the difference and go 10:45? Well, <laughs> we can. We can do. That gives him time to wrap it up. The um, we can make whatever restrictions we we want. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Hollander, would you be would? Uh, I would be amendable to 1045. Um, my other question, though, is not just the music, though, but what about the uh, the additional uh, events? It says all any other events will end no later than 10 on weekends, nine on weekdays. So you want to increase that to 11 and 10? Is that correct? No, I don't. I don't come, come, sir, come forward if you're going to just stay up here for the time being. Thank is you. Is that yeah. correct, Mr. Myers? I, yeah. That that's uh, the proposal. 11 on weekends, 10 on weekdays. See these? Oh, okay. Yeah. See, I, I have a problem with that because again, that's that's similar to what I just spoke on. I think increasing that there, there's really no no real need to do that. It's if things are working well now and you haven't had uh, any any real problems with it. Uh, yeah, know, so I what the other events now was what nine on weekdays and ten? Correct. Yeah, on that's, weekends. That's, that's yeah. what we passed for other events. Correct. It was. Uh, 10 p.m. on weekends and 9 p.m. on weekdays. Yeah, I mean, I, we can make that the music cut off because I mean, I always have staff there cleaning up. So, I mean, I always need a little time after the, I don't know what you guys consider closing time. You know, it's just my staff, right. the guests are leaving, music's over at 10. I mean, I'm. Now the, uh, Robert, I have a, a question. The, Original CUP uh, does not address music for other events. It only addresses music for wedding receptions. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> What's your question? <laughs> the question is, does that mean there's no music for other events? 
Um, I think because that was part of what the packet that we received from Mr. Pressman, there appeared to be a, um, a uh, saxophone player or someone playing a horn and yeah. someone else playing. Uh, uh, Rock and roll music is how he put it. Uh, <laughs> playing another instrument that was, was uh, at a, something what appeared to be other than a wedding reception. Yeah, I think this does allow the wording on the condition now allows outdoor music for other events. But what? the most concern I remember was the reception because uh, the discussion was that the wedding, the ceremonies themselves are obviously quiet and they may be outdoors. People love the outdoor aspect and that's fine, but it's just the receptions when people cut loose sometimes. And well, the, well, the way this is written right now, it only it says uh, wedding receptions be offered on Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays, no mm -hmm. limitations to months. Receptions will end no later than 12 a.m., except that music at such wedding receptions will end no later than 11 p.m. All other events, uh, and it gives those times, so the only place we address music is connection with the wedding receptions. Yeah. So when we were discussing this, excuse me, May, um, you know, the biggest concern was the wedding receptions, and I think at the time, everything else ended later, so we weren't worried about specifically saying the music will end at a certain time. But yes, I'm allowed to have music. It's an outdoor, uh, my, my, my very first conditional use permit allowed me to do outdoor <coughs> events. We don't do any outdoor evening music at all. It would all be indoors. All events are all in, all evening events are indoors. And the music would be indoors, not outdoors. So if we change the time and leave it the way it is, then is he allowed to have music at events other than wedding receptions? Yes. Yeah. That's my thinking. Would you be amiable to changing just the weekend times by 15 minutes and leaving the weekdays as they are for music? And what, what were the weekday times again? As it is, as it, as it is, it's uh, ten o'clock on weekends and nine uh, p.m. on weekdays. Yes. <coughs> yeah. yeah. Leave that as is, and then give me the extra fifteen minutes for the music shut off for the weddings. And music would have to end at ten on any other event, and nine during the weekdays. Okay. Any okay. other qu questions? Okay. The chair will entertain a motion to approve CUP 20-02 uh, with two revisions. Revision one is that paragraph two in CUP 17-06 uh, would be replaced with the following paragraph. Wedding receptions will be offered on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Receptions will end no later than 12 a.m., except that music as such wedding receptions will end no later than 10.45 p.m. All other events will end at uh, 10 p.m. on weekends and 9 p.m. on weekdays. Revision number two is that paragraph six in CUP 17-06 uh, shall be replaced, uh, or shall have one change that no more than 250 guests allowed. That's a change from 200 to 250. Right. Chair will entertain a motion with those, uh, approving those changes. So moved. A second. Ms. Thamer makes a second. Ms. Sally, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Mr. Fromm? Yes. Uh, Mr. Hollander? Yes. And Ms. Bamer? Yes. And I vote yes. That's approved. Thank you. Okay. Next on our agenda is a rezoning request. The uh, location is 2949 Westmire Road and Donkey Road. Uh, application number is RZ20-01. 
Property mm -hmm. owners are Thomas W. DeBray and Rob Roberta A. DeBray. Current zoning is A, agricultural district, five acre minimum lot size. Requested zoning is RR, single family residential district, three acre minimum lot size. The 2030 master plan recommends low density residential, one to four dwellings per acre. The parcel size is uh, 36.17 acres. The location is the west side of uh, Dunkey Road, approximately 4,000 4, feet north of West Myers Road, near the cities of Winsville and Forestdale, located, excuse me, in Council District 1. Uh, staff. The image that you see on the screen uh, shows the property in question. And um, although some of it's addressed off of uh, West Meyer Road, other, another portion is uh, addressed off of Dunkey Road. Parcel area is about 36 acres altogether. Um, the location is north of Forestell. The zoning in that area is solidly agricultural, a agricultural district zoning. Um, that is, but the master plan uh, north of Meyer Road is solidly low density residential, one to four dwellings per acre. So I'm not talking about rural residential. Um, I'm, I'm talking specifically about the low density residential, that, that bright yellow that you'll often see. Let me see if I have a master plan map. That's the zoning agricultural. That bright yellow represents uh, in 2030, um, low density residential, one to four dwellings per acre. Now you may remember one to four dwellings per acre, um, that doesn't meet the minimum parcel size for, uh, for on-site sewage disposal systems. And this area is outside of both Forestells and the city of Wentzville's uh, sewer service areas, outside of the sewer, di sewer service district. So no time soon would this property uh, be able to develop at the densities that we're showing in the master plan, one to four dwellings per acre. So their proposal is to rezone it actually not to that density, but to one step below that to rural residential, which would be um, three, a minimum of three acre size. So gif given that, um, the, in terms of uh, land uses, it would conform to the um, county's master plan so county staff um, recommends that the Planning Zoning Commission recommend approval of this rezoning to RR, single family residential district, three acre minimum lot size. Any questions for staff? The, there's a letter from the Corps of Engineers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What impact does that have? Well, the property backs up to McCoy Creek and the way I read the letter, core from the letter of engineers is basically in a development of the property, say if this is developed for a rural residential subdivision, that it needs to be reviewed by the core of engineers to make sure there's not uh, wetlands that will be impacted. It's, it's, it's basically an advisory saying any development of the property needs to be reviewed by the core of engineers. That's okay. the way I read it. Assuming we approve this and then the core of engineers so there's issues, mm -hmm. assume the supremacy doctrine says the federal government controls over the, us mere people in St. Charles County? <laughs> Sorry, Councilman. Well, you know, <laughs> if wetlands are found, it's gonna be back on the back side of the property along the very edge. So there's, I, don't, I doubt there's very much wetlands on this property at all. Uh, but they do find it, because the density is so low, three acres per lot, they can easily incorporate wetlands areas within uh, lots. And if there's any uh, floodplain and they develop it as a subdivision, then it would be required to be set aside as, well, it may or may not need to be set aside as common ground. But either way, it's, I think it's, uh, it can easily be incorporated in developments of this density. Any questions, other questions for staff? Seeing none, we'll ask the applicant to come forward. <clears throat> Do you solemnly swear or affirm that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings under the pains and penalties of perjury? I do, sir. Please state your name and address for the record. Thomas Dubray, 2949 West Meyer, Forestdale, Missouri. Okay. Go ahead, Thomas. Um, the gentleman is, is correct in what he, how he described it. 
And we also seen something in the notes that he sent about the floodplain, and I can address that in a minute. Let me, I hate to bring this up, but let me back up a few years. Uh, we've lived on one of the parcels, the one on the, the west side of that, and adjacent property for 25 years. We bought it, it was zoned A1 Agricultural, it was three acre minimum lot size requirement. That happened, that went for probably close to 20 years. I don't know the exact date mm -hmm. of which the county decided to change the requirement within the zoning. Mm -hmm. um, basically what we're asking for is to go back to what it was originally for one reason, to provide in doing so some flexibility. We do intend at least to divide that portion up. In fact, I have a sketch here if you would like to see it. Um, as far as in the future, maybe a year or two years down the road or whatever. In going to the three acres, it allows more flexibility. Flexibility for people who want to buy. Some may want five acres, they may want eight acres. Others I've found, and not just retired people, who don't want to take care of that much property but they'd like to get away from the city. That combined with the fact of being able to make it more feasible to divide it up at all is why we're here. Um, <clears throat> I don't know a whole lot more to say than that. Um, we'd like to get it rezoned back to what it was. Um, my son has an interest in coming in there, and if we can get it into three-acre lots and build houses periodically. Um, not at any track home type pace, but just uh, one, two, three a year or whatever. And we'd be very happy to see it develop into a, a great community in West St. Charles County. Most of the properties that are just to the south not of right here, but of our main track, are all on three acres. So it's not any different than what is in that part of the section, put it that way. Okay. Any questions for the applicant? How many homes are you estimating in that area? Probably on this particular portion of what you see there, I've got it drawn one, really one, two, three, four, five, Six, including the existing home that we live in, which is up on the upper corner up there. And that's the part that backs to Macquarie Creek back there. Um, nothing else would be done back there because it's just not feasible. In fact, it just drops off from the back of the house down to the creek. But in that area, just six homes, whatever, would fit um, three-acre lots and an entrance coming out on Dinky Road. Any other questions? Hearing none, thank you, sir. You're quite welcome. I'll now open the public hearing for application number RZ20-01. Anyone wishing to speak? Do you solemnly swear or affirm that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings under the pains and penalties of perjury? I do. Please state your name and address for the record. Thank you very much, members of the commission. My name is Arnie C. A.C. Dinoff, public advocate and resident, mailing address P.O. Box 1535, O'Fallon. Um, with our uh, use plan, our 2030 use plan, I think we're uh, far north of this area. For it to qualify for the three uh, are um, three acres, one home for every three acres. However, I'd like to go on record. I know this is just a zoning issue, but is what's come up in other issues with these three acre tracks is retention, detention, and uh, runoff. Um, and the ownership of the roadways, I think we're, that's probably down the road, but I just want to make it a point to put that on the record. The water and detention, the more, less that we take away the tract, uh, lessen the uh, acreage from five acres to three acres. We take away the saturation absorption rate and we, um, somebody downstream is gonna be uh, un unduly <coughs> impacted. 
So, um, but otherwise, I'm not opposed to this project. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing for RZ 20-01 and bring it back to the commission. Anyone have any questions, comments, concerns? Motion to approve RZ 20-01. Second. Uh, Ms. Sally with the second. Mr. Fromm with the motion. Mr. Hollander, how do you vote? Yes. Ms. Bamer? Yes. Uh, Ms. Sally? Yes. Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Mr. Fromm? Yes. I vote yes. Passes. Uh, we have no uh, continued items. Chair will entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the January 15th, 2020 regular meeting. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, sign aye. 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 Uh, minutes have been approved. Uh, Planning and Zoning Division, any updates? Mm, very quickly. I want to let you know that uh, St. Charles County's master plan, the 2030 master plan, has, uh, is, will be winning an award from the American Planning Association, the St. Louis uh, Metropolitan Section, for the online interactive aspect of the master plan uh, because um, it's a great way to communicate. It's, um, people can dive in to the extent of their interests. Uh, classrooms can use the, the master, online master plan. And um, let's see, I have it up before me, but I won't ask them to put them up on the screen, just the name of interest. Ah, look at that. <laughs> but it's an online interactive master plan, uh, again, where people can dive into different levels of interest. There's all sorts of um, detailed information or just general information. Um, it's, it's very well done. It was done all in-house within the Planning Zoning uh, Division staff, and we are proud of it. So, um, and we will, we are understanding we'll, we'll be winning, the county will be winning an award for that. Also, I wanted to mention the last couple of meetings, we've had uh, quite a few comments about stormwater and stormwater quality and erosion control. Um, you may remember that St. Charles County, uh, the state of Missouri issues us a stormwater permit. And so we have a whole program in order to address stormwater um, quality and, um, um, and, and quantity both. Uh, but the state of Missouri is now stepping up what the requirements are and is, uh, is, uh, is interested in seeing uh, St. Charles County take additional steps in terms of stormwater quality. So. Our department has been uh, soliciting feedback from stormwater professionals in the development community for St. Charles County uh, to look at actually revising, uh, seeing if the county council would be interested in re revising our stormwater ordinances to address some additional things having to do with stormwater quality. Right now, our ordinance uh, really just addresses those large storm events like uh, these, these large floods. But most of the water that's coming from subdivisions and, and through these uh, subdivision basins uh, are these day in and day out small events, not necessarily those really large events. Um, and again, there's an interest in addressing stormwater quality in addition to quantity. So that's something that um, you, you may hear more about in the next, uh, next few months. Also wanted to welcome um, Marissa Olmstead. She's uh, a new staff member in the Planning and Zoning Division, and she's gonna be assisting us in future <coughs> Planning and Zoning uh, Commission meetings. I wanted to, to welcome you. Welcome. Welcome. That's Anything all else? I have. No, that's all I have for tonight. Thank you, Robert, and congratulations on your award. Yes. It's the uh, county's award. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> We're excited. Any commissioner have any comments? Uh, Again, welcome to our two new members. Be sure to be here next month. Fireworks. If they let us. Fireworks stands. If, yeah. if they let us, yeah. Um, fireworks stands. Well, yeah, fireworks. You haven't done that either, have you? Yes, oh, okay. I did. Okay. Last year. Okay. Um, Chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor, sign aye. 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 Meeting's adjourned. All right. Yeah.